last time on Final Fantasy VII. And now, the exciting conclusion. Oh, you know, nothing. Hey, you. Don't see many flowers around here. Why, yes, I would love to buy a flower. <laughs> And scene. Hello, this is Chaos Baloo, and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII. Things have changed since last time. We just bought a flower! There was a preview before this episode. That's not going to be a regular thing, by the way, but I thought it would be a fun thing to do just this once. And... Check it out! I sort of fixed my controller. I say sort of because it's not... It's not... Still not really what I would call perfect. I find... It's not quite as sensitive as I would like, but it's way better than the oversensitivity I had before. Way, way better. Also, I can use my D-pad now, which is amazing. Well, I mean, not really. Again, it's a little bit... It feels a little bit sticky, if I had to describe it. Although, I can also use my analog stick, and it works pretty much fine. Mostly. Still way better than before. Oh, as long as I'm in here, actually. There's a few things that, in the course of re redoing the last five minutes or so, I realize I need to fix. I need to be on, I want to be on memory cursory. Initial is for noobs. Um, field messages can be a little bit faster. Battle speed can be faster. Message speed should probably still be about that for battles. Um... Let's not get out of it. Let's not get out of hand. But most importantly of all, I need to fix my window color. Wait, can I? Um, no. Well, okay then. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, okay. That works. It's still a little blue in this corner, actually. No, that's too purple. Okay, yeah, that works for me. There we go. And hey, it even matches my outfit. Anyway, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Where we left off last time. Ooh, it's a potion! Now, on to this sequence. So... Hey, you! Fight him! Just because I want to show something off. Something about this encounter, in fact. Oh yeah, I can now easily do that as well, which is nice. Not really necessary right now, but it will come in handy later on. Because I rebounded those buttons. Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to fight those guys really quickly. First of all, victory fanfare! Yay! But, oh, oh, I actually do get experience for that. And money. Wow, I thought I didn't get any money for this. Aw, uh, man, I'm totally gonna fight all these guys. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. But I actually want money. Because we're gonna go shopping. And we probably don't have enough money to buy everything I want. But we will hopefully have enough money to buy most of it. And an extra, oh, 100 gil could very well be the difference between an additional thing. Or not. Or maybe it won't be the difference at all. I don't really know. But these guys are easy, so I figured why not fight them? Pretty much. That, that's pretty much what it comes down to. 
Oh yeah, also, if I just wait, then I eventually have to fight them anyway. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You end up in the same situation no matter what. Okay, well this is a little bit unfortunate, but yeah, hit him. Oh hey, Limit Break. That's awesome. Braver! Okay, so, I may as well explain that controlling th that controller thing now. In the first episode, I... Okay, actually, full stop. First off, I use a... some software, uh, the name of which I cannot recall off the top of my head, I'll have to... But, I use some software to allow me to use a, uh, PS3 controller on my PC. It's what I do for all male peeing, and for a lot of other things, too. For a lot of general gaming, really. I... C now, it is pretty damn configurable, this software, which is fortunate, because that's how I got out of this problem. But, uh, it, can, it has several emulation modes. One of them is emulating a 360 controller, which is what I had to set up as in Episode 1. However, there are two problems with that. First of all, as I discovered, the sensitivity on the, uh, on the analog is not very good. Or rather, it's too sensitive. It's the same difference. But also... But also, Final Fantasy... There are also two additional problems. First of all, the config for Final Fantasy X only supports buttons 1 through 10, meaning my buttons 11 through 14, I want to say? Sometimes more, depending on what mode I'm in. Are dead weight because I can't actually configure them in Final Fantasy VII's button configuration. But beyond that, it also is really particular about what it'll actually accept as input from as directional input, which was the other problem I had. But I've more or less resolved it with a custom setup for my controller. Which I can do. Also, guess what? Cell McCloud is back! Looks like I'm a little late. Which is just as well, because it means you've had plenty of time to get me my money. What a damn entrance, though. Like, seriously, what an asshole. <laughs> it's totally a big scene. Who are you kidding? Uh, hmm. Well, okay then. Okay, so I know which one is Biggs and which one is Wedge now. Let's see if I remember. I guess that's probably from the smoke. Hmm. Anyway, let's get moving. Last train out of Sector 8 Station. Last stop is Sector 7, Train Graveyard. Expect time of arrival in the middle of the Garam Night. Hmm. This guy. Hola! Wait, what? Hmm. No, I don't want to talk to you. Uh, have I? Bombed number one re Wait, we didn't bomb that reactor, did we? We were totally- we are at like the number six? No. We were at either the number seven or eight reactor, not the number one. Also, it seems, which it feels somewhat relevant because it seems a little bit early for them to be reporting in the paper that we just bombed a reactor since we literally just did it. Um, 
So either there was another miraculous bomb that I didn't know about, or the, there's something fishy going on with the reporters. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, one or the other. L? Hmm. If you say so. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be famous, Wedge. Oh? Yeah, I wasn't really intending to. I actually just wanted to go talk to, uh, like this. Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, let's go. It's about to start. Ooh. Okay, well... Uh, 1 to 10,000 scale. Um... Let's see, this monitor is... I'm gonna say... It seems fairly large. About... Larger than their heads. 50 meters above ground. Hmm... Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out if this is act if that is actually a reasonable scale. Oh, we did just blow up the number. What? Wait. They have? They did just report it? The okay, there's something seriously weird going on with the reporting. Each town used to have a name, but no one in Megar remembers them. They're just numbered sectors now. Now that's how you know you're dealing with a dystopia. No one even remembers the name of anywhere, so they just refer to them by numbers. Um... Yeah... Ecoterrorism? Also probably not a bad sign of a dystopia, come to think of it. Hmm. Anywho... Yep. Hmm. What's interesting... It... <laughs> uh, what's interesting is that they check the IDs wire... seemingly wirelessly, so they must have some sort of R RF chip in them. Hmm. Looking forward to it. Oh? So when you say the surface, you mean the ground? Because... Personally, if you were to say to me, you can see the surface, I would assume you can see daylight. Um... But evidently not here. <laughs> I mean, it's hardly the only reason, but it's fair to say that putting that putting huge slums underneath a huge plate in the air is probably not really great for the people living underneath it. It also raises the question of why the fuck you would do that in the first place. I mean, I mean, it sort of seems cool until you realize that it is a huge waste of resources to both to build and maintain for no real gain. Like, if you want additional living space, you can build larger buildings and you can build underground. Actually, there's a lot of advantages of building underground. But literally building a whole plate level on top of an existing stru structure is just a huge waste of resources. But anyway... <laughs> Here we are! Sector... 7. Slums, right? Yeah, Sector 7. Yo, get over here, y'all! This mission was a success. But don't get lazy now, you hear? Oh? 
Yeah, don't be scared by that explosion where we almost died twice. Really? Really? You're usually asking for trouble there, Barrett. Okay, they're all running to the left, so I'm gonna go this way just to be contrary. Hey, it's stuff! But actually, not really. We I don't think I can actually reach anything over here right now. I sort of just wanted to do that, because I could. No, we are gonna go this away. Wait, did I just literally walk right through someone? Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a save point. Aw, oh, man, if I had known that. Well, I mean, last time I screwed up anyway for, with the Aerith thing. But had I known this was here, I probably would have planned to use it. You know, had I not screwed up. Oh? Yeah, that's a good point. There's a huge plate here. If that plate came, if this pillar, this is the main support structure for the, this plate. If this was destroyed, everyone underneath the plate and probably everyone on it would all die. That would be like what? Literally an eighth of Midgar's population? That is, that's significant. And Midgar is, like, probably one of the most densely po One of. It is probably the most densely populated place in, uh, the world in this game. Probably. Anyway, let's- ooh. Okay, then. Someone got shot in the ass. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's a news update. They say that there was a terrorist explosion up above. That's what this time... Wait, no. And that this time, it was a macro reactor. Uh... Yeah, okay, that's a lot of money. Yeah, probably. I mean, presumably there's a lot of civilian people working in a power plant. Although, maybe not, I mean, this is Shinra. Hmm. Anyway. I mean, Shinra's literally a power company. I would think that the one place you would be guaranteed to find lots of Shinra employees would be a reactor. But anyway. Oh, okay, I can't shop right now. At least not there. You know, I want to buy something. I want to buy these things. Don't need to buy that, I already have one. And I don't want to buy a grenade, because they're bad. But I want three of these. There we go. Wait, no. Do I want three of these? No, I'm not sure. Maybe I wanted four, or maybe I wanted to wait. Yeah, you know, whatever. It, this is fine. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Really, I can't even go into the damn tutorial area yet. That is just... man... whatever. Let's see, the top part, I believe, is just an inn, but there might be an item in there, so I'll look! Absolutely not. Ten gil for this dump? Ha! Actually, that's a steal. Uh, but I still don't want to spend the night here. Oh yeah, I just jumped down like a boss. Out of the way! Okay. We got through it. Now then, now then, now then! Pay me.
Nu. Hmm. I feel I should have come in here, actually. I've been go This is probably about 20 minutes long. Uh... No, I definitely did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you can call me. No, it's, it's just it's just t Tifa. I don't have, man. Yeah. Wait, what? Hmm. Hmm. Nope. Psych. <laughs> Right, well, this is boring. Let's blow this popsicle get stand. Eh, talking. And suddenly I'm sitting cross-legged on a table. Secretly, this is a trick to try to get more money from Barrett. It's not gonna work, but it's <laughs> but that's but that's my stated motivation, and I'm sticking to it. Uh... No, actually, legitimately, there's a reason I gave that to Barrett and not Tifa. Uh, sort of, and sort of not. I mean, okay, later on, well. You know what? You, I'll explain it. I'm not sure when I'll explain it. I'm not going to explain it right now. <laughs> no. Right now, I'm going to go over here and save. Because I am totes done, yo. Um. Wow. I should just not talk like that. Uh, seriously though, I am done. Until next time, this has been Let's Play Final Fantasy VII! And have a great day. Bye! I do not have a wave button. So just pretend I'm waving. Bye! <laughs>